Hey everyone, I'm Morgan Hoffman here and I'm just waiting to start my interview with Cree Chikino. I'm so excited to interview her. She has a big Netflix movie coming out tomorrow called The Sleepover. It looks like so much fun. You'll also recognize her from Mr. Iglesias. So we're just waiting for her to sign in. Hi guys. Alrighty, so many people joining. Alright. Okay, so if you guys are just tuning in, I'm just waiting to interview Cree Chikino. She has a new movie coming out on Netflix called The Sleepover, and it looks like so much fun. Got a hey buddy, hey buddy. Here we go. Hey girl. Hello. Hey, how are you? I'm well. Hey, how about yourself? I'm great. I'm just gonna turn up your volume. So I feel like you've been super busy doing press for your upcoming Netflix movie. So what can you tell us about the sleepover? It drops tomorrow, right? Yeah, it drops, drops tomorrow. Um, That's amazing. Yeah, what can you tell us about the the whole plot? It looks like it looks really funny. Yeah, it's very fun. It is a sort of summer for the whole family action comedy. It's about a young girl and her brother who discover that they're sort of mild mannered, otherwise, you know, fairly normal standard stay at home mom is an ex thief who has been in witness protection for years. And their whole life is sort of built on this reality that she has now because of her witness protection. And she gets kidnapped to pull one last big job. So the kids all sort of, um, uh, our leading lady Clancy and her brother and then their respective best friends one of which is played by me Amazing. sort of go on this big wild irresponsible adventure all in <laughs> one night throughout the streets of Boston to find the kidnapped parents and sort of get to the bottom of this whole mystery well I have to admit you have the funniest lines in the trailer I kept giggling every time I was watching it how much fun did you have on this one Oh, so much fun. It was like summer camp. It was I, everything sort of aligned. It was like we got to work in these really beautiful, cool locations. The whole cast, we all gelled instantly. We all got along great. Our, our, our team and our crew and our director was fantastic. And she allowed for a lot of improv and playing and trying new things. So yeah, I got to try a lot of fun stuff. There's kind of no rules with my character Mim. So it was dreamy. It was dreamy all around. And also there's such fantastic, I mean, like Ken Marino, Malin Ackerman, shut up. Like these comedic masterclass teachers were also the best people. So it was, it was just so much fun all around. So I was going to ask you, so I'm a huge fan of Malin Ackerman. So what, what's she like on set? Oh, so imagine the sweetest, kindest, just, you know, class act professional multiply it by 10 you're not even at Malin she's Aww. just the coolest sweetest lady so talented and so committed she has a lot of stunts in the movie she has a lot of action so I mean we'd be you know pulling up in the van at our hotel 10 o'clock at night just finished with our day all exhausted and she'd be jumping in at 10 o'clock at night to go back to set to rehearse her stunts for the next day and no complaints no nothing she's she's such a badass and she's just you know, just really just cool and graceful and, you know, knows everybody's names and never yeah. complains. And um, she really, her and Ken, I think, really set the tone for set every day and just for the movie in general. So, yeah, Malin is everything you want her to be. Oh, I love hearing that. Okay, yeah. so I, I want to know, when's the last time you had, like, an epic sleepover? Like, I don't think I've had one since I was 15, but, like, a good one where you're getting, like, yeah. pizza bites and you're watching horror films. Like, what's, like, the last good sleepover you've had? I didn't really grow up doing sleepovers. I wasn't like allowed for a really long time. Yeah. And and I and I like never enjoyed them very much. Like I'm very like I have a lot of like 
food issues and allergies so like snacks was always something I could never participate in yeah and I always like fell asleep really early like not, yeah. I also was the one that was exempt myself like I'm not playing the whoever falls asleep early gets something drawn on them game like yeah. I'm out like I'm asleep <laughs> don't touch me I also so you played it safe <laughs> yeah I played it safe and if we were watching a movie and everyone wanted to like talk and make jokes I was always like shh like I'm I'm listening like can we pay attention so I'm not a good sleepover person <laughs> My best like, sleepover is probably just like me at home just going to sleep. <laughs> okay, I feel like this makes me like you even more. This is so funny. I mean, I had the sleepovers, but I feel like for the longest time now, I'm like, I need my space and I want to watch my movie by myself. <laughs> yeah, when I put my headphones on, let me have like my tea and watch my movie and nobody talk to me and nobody touch me and yeah. leave me alone. <laughs> I <laughs> love it. Um, another, you know, project that you just look like you have so much fun on is Mr. Glacius. How special is that show for you to work on? It's so special. I, it was my like second job job that I got after my very first one, which was on a show called Game Shakers, which is on Nickelodeon, which I started when I was like 12 and I finished when I was like 15. So it was like my childhood show. Yeah. Um, and it is just such a dream. I mean, it sounds like I'm just kind of complimenting everything that I'm working on, but it's so true. Like that set is just so calm and smooth and easy and just everything kind of goes right all the time. And I love the, the love that I have for that cast is so real and deep and, and just everyone is just talented and lovely and wonderful to work with. I love my character, my soul. I love the stories yeah. that we tell. And it really like kind of changed my perspective of like the industry and sets in a good way. Cause I was, oh. yeah, I was kind of developing a pretty sinister view of things. And it, this is a wild, ugly industry at times. So it's not completely unfounded, but it, it swooped in just in time to be like, no, there's so much good here. And there really, really is. So I have a big place in my heart for that. And sure. do you really like working in front of a live audience? Because on that show, you work on a live audience, right? Yeah, yeah, which I had, oops, which I had never done before. Yeah. Um, so it's really fun. And it, it almost, and when, before I did it, I, it seemed so wild. And I didn't know, like, doing a show with people in the room, like, while you're filming, like, that seemed so bizarre. And now it seems like we're going to film and nobody's watching us. This is yeah. so weird. Like, where's everybody? <laughs> We all slipped into it, and uh, you know we have a lot of stand-up comics on our show. Sherry Shepard, obviously, oh. uh, Gabe. So um, they just light up when there's an audience in the room, and they just go off. I feel like they 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 do kind of plot jokes and changes they want to make throughout the week, but they save it for show night to surprise even us, the cast. Yeah. Aww. So, so electric those nights, and you never really know what's going to happen, which is yes. kind of the best way to go. Well, I want to know, like, so if someone misses up a line or whatever, misses a cue, like, does, that's in front of everyone. Like, is that yeah. just something you get used to really quickly? And, it, and is that kind of fun for the audience to see? They love it when we <laughs> F up. They have so much fun when we screw up. <laughs> like, <laughs> because it's great. Because it's, it is nice to see, like, a show you watch, like, how human it is. And you kind of see the process. So, um, yeah, we make a lot of mistakes on show night. And it's always fun. And sometimes our best stuff comes from, you know, saying a line which nobody thought was particularly special all week and it's like the biggest laugh and so we're all just kind of standing there looking at each other all surprised by this cue and then other things change so surprises and mess ups and you know new lines that Gabe and Sherry didn't tell anyone about and, uh, <laughs> and even our writers I feel like have like a certain energy on show nights where things just kind of come to them and they'll run on and be like try this this time and then run off and we all get yeah. to try new stuff so the audience loves it when we screw up and it Love makes it. it funnier too. And bloopers like during the week when it's just us because we do shoot without them for a day are fun. Yeah. And it's always like, huh, huh. but I mean, it's something just about having the audience there laughing at you makes tiny little flubs hysterical. So. That's awesome. Yeah, because I've always wondered that, you know, you hear a live audience laughing and I'm like, but what if they mess up? Like, do they get embarrassed? Yeah. But yeah, to hear that it makes it even funnier. That's great. Yeah, I personally get really stressed because I, I, I don't flub a lot. So you're a like, perfectionist. Line-wise, I certainly try to be. So, yeah. so if I do mess up and if it's in front of the audience, I'm always really surprised. Um, <laughs> there was one moment we had this past season. We were all sitting in the classroom and we had these big classroom scenes which go for a while and we're all just throwing one-liners at each other. And we were all sitting around Gabe said his line, and then it was dead silent. We were all staring at each other like, whose is it? 
whose is it? I would have put my life that it wasn't me. And we're all just sitting there staring at each other. And I didn't realize that everyone had slowly started to look at me. And then our script supervisor, Sorel, was like, Cree, honey. And I went, it's me. And it was <laughs> one of my favorite mess ups all season because I, I take it very personally when I yeah. mess up. Oh, I love it. Okay. No, you sound like a perfectionist, which is good. I'm kind of the same way too. Yeah. So I love that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you've been promoting, you know, shows coming up, movies coming up, but obviously a lot of production has shut down because of everything going on in the world. Some things are slowly coming back. Some aren't. So where are you right now? Like, are you home? Are you kind of enjoying downtime? Are you busy with press? Like, what's your life look like right now? Right now, I'm actually, I'm back home in New York. I just dropped my sister, my twin sister off at college. So it's like a oh. big family moment. Well, big moment. Big moment, big moment. Um, but yeah, I, I would, I'd probably be in between jobs anyway if the world wasn't what it is right now. So yeah, yeah have, you know, these drops happening, um, press. And I also have no idea what's going on. This industry is strange. I think some things are slowly crawling back into production or exploring what production could look like. But um, I, but it's still such a big question mark. You know what I mean? There's a yeah. lot of uncertainty right now. So I'm, I'm currently it's it's press land right now. Yeah. Um, was your sister emotional? Were you emotional? What was that scene like? We were fine all day okay. making jokes and I like fell asleep in the car because it was kind of a long drive and then I yeah. woke up when we were 10 minutes away and had such a panic attack because I was like I did not take this entire car ride to process any of this we didn't have a big goodbye we you know loaded everything into the car yeah and separated because my mom had to drive on and help her pack in we hugged each other and it was totally fine and then I went off with my grandparents and we just waited a while while they packed up but I'm told my sister got teary-eyed about me when she drove in Aww. So she definitely got emotional. I did, but while hers was more sad, I was kind of panicky. Like, I was like, it yeah. came with an era, and I didn't even process it. And she was just about, but now, you know, we're FaceTiming, and she's settling in. And I know she's going to do great, and she's really excited to be there. So it's all good. Oh, I love that. Well, thanks for sharing that with me. Yeah. Um, now, you have an amazing following on social media. You know, people have been following you, like you said, since you were 12 on your show and kind of have been growing with you as your career has grown. Um, what's it like kind of having such a loyal fan base? Oh, it's so strange, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I really do. I People have been saying this to me a lot. It's true. Like, we feel like we grew up with you. Like, we watched you grow up. And it's yeah. true. I mean, some of the fan accounts which, you know, tag me and edit some beautiful artwork and things like that, have been doing it since my Game Shakers days, since I was 12, 13, you know, pre-pubescent Cree. And yeah. I'm still here, which is so wild. Um, and I still to this day can't wrap my head around it at all. Like, I just don't understand. And it, we do get so normalized looking at screens all day, we forget there's, like, actual people doing this stuff. So any when it does sink in, which happens quite a lot these days, it is always really disorienting and wild, but also comforting. It's nice to know like the people on there kind of know me and have for years and years. And we grew up together because a lot of them are really young. So it's strange and lovely and bizarre. And <laughs> I still don't get it, but it's really, really humbling. Oh, I love that. Um, you have posted about very important issues to you on social media. And recently, uh, you did a post about body positivity. How important is it for you to use your platform for this purpose? Yeah, I think, um, I, I mean, anybody with social media, and you don't have to be verified, you don't have to have millions of followers. If you've got any following at all, you do sort of have a responsibility to talk about important things other than yourself and your work. And there's place for that, of course, but, um, you know, there's a lot of especially right now, as a lot of people become aware of things we all should have been aware of to this extent a very long time ago. So yeah, there's, I don't, I don't really, there's definitely a huge responsibility to use your platform and your social media responsibly. And I think, that usually means talking about stuff that isn't yourself occasionally. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, I'm still trying and learning and have, you know, miles and miles to go. I'm just getting into it, which is such a shame, but it's true. And um, yeah, I think we've all got to be better in that respect. Well, I've just had so much fun talking with you. 
I so much for talking to you. I know. You're so great. Um, and I cannot <laughs> wait to see your movie. Um, Thank just the you. trailers alone have me hooked. So congrats on the new movie. And yeah, I can't wait to see what else you're going to do. Thank you so much. It was really, really fun talking with you. Ah, uh, you too. All right. Well, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much. Have a good one. You Bye -bye. too. See you, girl.